something that I think you should learn. I talked about sales a couple of times now. One of the greatest living copywriters at the moment, uh, John Carlton, uh, and uh, I think he credit or claims that he's the most ripped off copywriter. A lot of people uh, take his copy and base their sales messages, you know, on his, like they slightly re rewrite things. He's, he's up there with one of the greats. You know, Gary Halbert was another one. Uh, he's passed away. Um, I mean, you can go back to things like Claude Hopkins and things like that. I think, I think you should study uh, writing sales messages. Very, very important. When I, when I think about uh, writing copy, um, I have this on my iPhone, um, which I've got in my bag so it doesn't ring and everybody else has got theirs on silent now. Um, I, I, it's like a little mind map uh, program and I have this uh, plus a few other things in my iPhone. So whenever I'm about to write copy or do any sort of sales, I have this handy. Um, if I'm about to do a web video, I'll write out a little script, a bullet point of what I'm going to do and I just make sure all of these elements are present somewhere on the web page. Firstly, you want some sort of headline that hooks them and drags them in. You've only got a few seconds to grab someone's attention and tell them right up front, here's what I'm going to offer you, here's the problem that I solve, here's how I can help you. So you use a headline to do that. Then often I like to go into a little bit of the myth, the story. I like everybody gets hooked on the stories. Uh, I've always been interested, I suppose, uh, the Richard Bandler thing gives it away, a, a like interested in the hypnosis side of things and going back as far as like Milton Erickson and he talked, uh, he was a, a medical he was into medical hypnosis and he did it all through story and that's part of the reason why I tell stories like at the start like I mean that story was uh, layered with uh, lots of messages and takeaway things and you'll find at the end of the day as well I'll give you another story as well with all of those uh, messages built into it you want to stories engage people and hook people in everybody that's that's how knowledge in the past was passed down you know an elder would sit down and everybody would sit around and uh, he'd tell you this story about how there was a boogeyman out in the forest over there and that's how the kids knew that they shouldn't go into the forest because the boogeyman would get them so you you want to create stories to hook and draw people in uh, and i often like to tell stories like where I can, um, I was like you, I experienced the same problem as you. You want to tell the person, uh, understand their problems uh, as, as well as they can and almost be able to explain the problems and issues that they're having better than they can. So your avatar, you need to know them inside and out and then you can tell the story, their story. I know, I know what it's like um, when you don't have those rock hard abs. I was there too. I was compul compulsively eating. I used to love the Kingston cookies and I couldn't eat enough of them. Aren't they delicious? You've probably got your own favourite food that you like to eat. You know, I mean, you, you really get in there and tell that story with them and, and then you kind of uh, take them, it's almost like agitating the problem. Um, I know that problem and then you can kind of come into start introducing the solution and then here's, what's hap here's what happened. Then I stumbled across um, you know, uh, Willow's Gym um, and I got a fantastic uh, uh, personal trainer and they gave me a regime and it got me into shape and here's where I am now. So headline, tell the story, um, create that pain, take them through the process, how you created that solution. I also like to make sure that who am I as well uh, and on the website sometimes I won't embed it into every sales message because if the sales message is on Melbourne SEO if they want to find out who I am they'll click on you know about us tab up the top but tell your story about who you are how you got to where you are uh, and people People do business with people. They don't do business with other businesses and people connect with people. So by telling the story, you can really connect with someone. Uh, then uh, you want to make sure that you make them that offer. So once you've come up to having a solution, give them a really clear offer. What am I going to be getting? Um, make sure that you talk about the features and the benefits. I talked about that. Uh, layer in your testimonials. Testimonials are key and you'll find actually probably at lunchtime and in the uh, afternoon break and also uh, at the end of the day as well, we'll be getting you guys to give testimonials as well if you enjoyed the material. Uh, so testimonials are just absolutely key because it, it proves that you can deliver on your promise. Uh, I can sit here and tell you how great I am uh, and you know, here's all the things that I've done and I'm absolutely awesome but it's so much more powerful if you just get another client or someone else to say, yep, 
he knows your stuff, He's, you know, he helped me, I was in the same situation that you're in, get them to tell their story about how they were struggling or whatever and then how they used your material or your product or service to get the desired outcome uh, and, and have them recommend to you. So definitely use that. Um, try and include sort of promises and guarantees where you can. Uh, if you can, make a really bold promise, like I mean, a lot of our information product, we will offer a 90-day or 60-day money-back guarantee. Now, the first inkling for a lot of people to think is, you know, if you do that, you're going to get so many people requesting a refund or, you know, um, potentially that could be terrible for a business. But it's a little bit counterintuitive. Even though you might think that, you'll, you'll find, sure, you might get a few more people asking for a refund, but you'll get a lot more people saying yes that were standing on the edge and they weren't quite sure if they should, you know, step off the edge and, and take that leap. But they might do it now because they, they feel like that risk is removed, you know, the risk removal. Um, and then scarcity as well, where you can. I've I hate reading stuff when you go onto a website and they've got this countdown timer and you've got the next 30 minutes to place your order and there's only seven copies left uh, and you must buy now. Um, that's kind of like fake scarcity. If there's real scarcity, make sure you let them know up front. Like, I mean, we might do a product launch and um, we will get a DVD set made and we'll get 50 done up in our first print run and we'll say to them... Um, uh, you know, we've got 50 ready to go. If you order now, then uh, it'll get shipped out straight away. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait an extra two weeks because we're going to have to get it refulfilled, uh, remade up before we can send it out. See, that's scarcity. If someone's keen to go and now they know I'm going to have to wait an extra two weeks, everybody wants stuff now. Like, I mean, that's just the way our whole lives are at the moment. Everybody wants that instant gratification and satisfaction. So I've built that scarcity in without doing it in a sleazy sort of, you know, uh, non-true fashion. And then finally that call to action. So there's kind of a little bit in the order that I would do, but sometimes I'd mix it up. I would take that, write that down, and whenever you create any sales message, just try and think, how can I embed all of these elements into it? 